Hello, everyone. Great to uh, see you all here again today. I'm uh, glad you're sticking with it. <laughs> and I'm glad some of you are excited for uh, for today as well. Um, today, we are talking all about uh, lighting on this uh, this fourth day of the uh, the workshop. Um, so uh, let's just take a very quick recap, though, of uh, what we've gone through so far. Uh, so we've done the Stream Deck Mastery. Uh, the last two days have been all about audio with audio processing. And then uh, yes. Uh, yesterday was all about audio uh, routing, routing, whichever way you say it. <laughs> um, and so if you haven't seen those, then uh, definitely go and catch those on the replay. Uh, but today we are talking about lighting and green screen. So obviously lighting is the thing that makes, uh, you know, any camera shine. So without it, you are <laughs> you are nowhere. So we'll dig into uh, some lighting best practices uh, and then also into green screen. For the first, um, I would say about eight months that I was on uh, YouTube, then all of my videos were had a green screen background just because of uh, the location I was in and I'll talk about more about that later but uh, I think green screen gets a bit of a bad name really so I just wanted to uh, give out some uh, some solutions to uh, common uh, problems that you may encounter with green screen and basically how to do it so that it's going to look uh, effective for you and, and make it work for you so that's what we're going to be covering today uh, then tomorrow is all about the uh, not tomorrow it's actually Monday we've got a weekend between now and then uh, all about the supporting apps that work well with uh, Ecamm uh, all these little utility style apps uh, and then on day six is the live zoom Q&A. So if there's anything that we've covered in any of these days um, that you want to just get some, uh, you know, actual face-to-face uh, -face answers on, then uh, bring those along to those sessions. Um, and to get access to that and indeed the downloads associated with this workshop, then go over to ecamtv slash tech and there you'll be able to sign up uh, if you haven't done already. Uh, and that will give you access to the downloads and then also to that Zoom uh, workshop as well. So uh, just a quick look uh, for the uh, the download for today before we get into that um, is here. We've got the uh, the lighting and green screen uh, download. Lots of information in here all about uh, the different types of uh, lighting setups that you may want to have, how to go about setting up this sort of stuff that I'm going to be covering today. Uh, but also what you'll find in there is a complete list of all of my lights. So uh, I thought it'd be useful as I'm going through talking about things. So if you having to uh, try and figure out exactly what it is I'm using, you'll find a full list of all the gear that I use, all the lighting gear is in there. Um, and then the same also with the uh, the green screen stuff as well. Lots of uh, tips that I'll be sharing, but you can find them all in here. So it's a really comprehensive guide um, all about lighting. So if you haven't already signed up, um, then definitely go ahead and, uh, and do that and get this uh, this free download. Um, so coming on to uh, lighting then and uh, what we're going to be uh, talking about uh, today, uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the uh, the three point lighting setup. It's kind of like an industry standard, uh, the best way to sort of illuminate you on screen on camera, uh, whether you are live streaming, creating content, um, or for you know, your business meetings, uh, you can really sort of enhance the appearance of, uh, of yourself on screen um, with, uh, you know, even if you haven't got, uh, you know, the latest and greatest camera, uh, but good lighting can make even, you know, a, a mediocre camera look great. I mean, for the first uh, year on YouTube, I was actually using a 10 year old Canon EOS 60D. So uh, running at 720 coming into uh, into Ecamm. Uh, but the lighting was the thing that sort of really helped to enhance that. But uh, again, even with, you know, a, a just a built in webcam, then the good lighting is going to be the thing that makes or breaks it. So uh, are we talking about three point lighting, how to go about setting that up effectively, and the reasons, uh, reasons to use it. Um, and then we'll talk about the art of light control, because that's really what it's all about. It's not about just, you know, blasting yourself with as much light as possible, uh, there is a sort of balance to be had there so that we'll d dive into that. Uh, next, we'll start talking about the uh, green screen, why to use that. Um, there's lots of uh, advantages to uh, being able to when you need to use green screen, I'm not suggesting, you know, go all in on it and uh, never have anything real in shot. Uh, but it does have its uh, place. I'll be explaining why I think that is and why I've uh, used it to uh, effect in the past. And then we'll talk, start talking about green screen options, so how to go about setting it up and things to consider. Uh, and then finally, talking about the actual green screen te technique, the thing that is going to make it uh, make it work for you. So um, let's uh, go on to the uh, the uh, the first step, then, shall we? And let's introduce this concept of three point lighting. And before we do that, I'll just quickly show you uh, what I'm sitting in right now. Uh, I've got uh, a large light up here. Uh, I've got another light that is over here. There's obviously lots of different sort of uh, feature lights little colored lights around the place as well. Um, but then there's also another light that's kind of actually directly above the camera that you're looking at now. Uh, and that's sort of shining over here from the uh, the back uh, side of me a little bit. And then obviously, of course, there's all the stuff going on in the background as well. 
So let's start breaking this down and actually what is uh, the three-point lighting? Because as I say, we've got those three sort of main lights. So what are those? Well, uh, here we go with the, uh, the sort of overview of the setup. Um, here is the subject, in this case, me sitting at my desk. I've got my camera in front of me. Uh, one thing to sort of bear in mind that will come into play as we go through is the uh, the field of view of the camera. So uh, we've got the back wall there, um, and then we've got the camera looking out here. Uh, so this is kind of the, like the field of view. Uh, Mr. Camera Junkie, I noticed, was in the chat earlier. <laughs> and I love that he calls this the cone of cleanliness. <laughs> that means that anything within this uh, it need to be, uh, needs to be all look, looking nice and tidy, but if your desk's a mess outside of that, nobody's going to see it. So uh, I do love that, uh, that term. But anyway, the field of view is something that we need to be conscious of uh, to know where your camera is actually kind of looking, if you like. Um, so uh, apart from that, then, the three lighting positions that I want to talk about I'll come to in a moment, but first of all, I just want to mention the idea of practical lights, which are, uh, you know, the things that you might have in the background that are for, you know, for decoration. So, you know, I've got uh, some lights going on behind my acoustic panels there. There's the whole back wall that has got some illumination on it as well. I've now got a, a new lighting feature, which is my Rodecaster Pro 2 <laughs> and a couple of other things there. And I just want to highlight that idea of these practical lights, these things that you might have in shot as little accent lights, um, because that's going to come into play play a little bit uh, a little bit later so those are practical lights those are things that are just basically featuring in the scene so then those three main lights though of the three-point lighting the first one is called the key light that's that big light that I've got over here right in front of me um, and the purpose of that light is to basically uh, you know be the primary source of light it is the key light now what i thought would be useful would be if i just actually switch out some of my lights now uh, and as i go through i'll just sort of build up the the lights so you'll see what's going on so i'm now completely in the dark uh, but if i switch on my key light um, then you'll see that that is now providing like the majority of light onto my face if I then go and add in the next one, which is called the fill light, uh, you can see that now on this side of my face, there are a lot of shadows because we've just got this main light over on the on this side. Um, and so the, the, this side of my face is now in shadow. So the point of the fill light is to fill in those shadows a little bit. So if I uh, now turn that one on, you'll see that the... Uh, that sort of fills in the uh, the light on that side of my face. Uh, not necessarily to the same brightness as the key light, but it is there to just fill in that, uh, that gap, uh, those shadows, I should say. Uh, so then the next one, which I've already put up on screen there, is the one uh, sort of behind and to the, uh, the right in this case. Um, and that is often called the hair light or the backlight. For obvious reasons, I'm calling it the backlight today. <laughs> so, um, and these are basically at sort of 45 degrees off to the front, the front left, the front right, and you know behind. Um, and the uh, you know whether you have the key light on the left or right is entirely up to you. But uh, they are crucially sort of off, not directly in front of you. Um, there is another thing here about the sort of angle of these, um, that they are around about 30 degrees, something like that, 25, 35 degrees. Um, up from me as well. So they're not just actually right in front of me, uh, directly out in front of me. Uh, if we come back here, you can see that it's actually raised up a little bit as well. So they're kind of like at 45 degrees off to either side uh, and then raised up slightly as well. Uh, there is another little thing about these, which is that uh, they talk about the, <laughs> the twinkle in the eye and you'll notice that it's sort of captured cap catching in my eye this reflection sometimes what people will do is actually have a dedicated light that is just shining directly into the eye to give that little effect but it's supposed to uh, you know sort of bring your uh, your personality to life if people can see that so there is that thing to be aware of when it's uh, when you're positioning these uh, that that is sort of visible uh, the other thing about the lighting position if you were wearing glasses is that you would uh, have these lights up there so that then they're not in a sort of direct line to reflect into the uh, the camera so sometimes when people are wearing glasses and they ask you know how can we stop the uh, the, the reflections in the glasses uh, it's just down to the positioning and raising up the uh, the, the lights uh, the best solution I've seen though is uh, the wonderful Bradley Vinson <laughs> and somebody asked him how he avoided the the glare in his glasses and he took his glasses off and poked his fingers through them because he didn't have lenses in he was uh, they're, they're just so much part of his brand now that he's had corrective surgery but just wears glasses with no lenses in so that is another solution to avoid the glare <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, I thought that was uh, wonderful. So uh, these are the sort of three key lighting positions or the, the three lighting positions, the key light, the fill light and the backlight. Uh, but if these were all just point sources of light, uh, then uh, you would end up basically with them just sort of filling the room if there was just literally a light bulb there. Um, and the other thing that you would have would be a really harsh source of light. So uh, you wouldn't get necessarily a sort of flattering coverage of your face, you would end up with something that was really harsh. So what we want to do then is we want to actually uh, modify this light in some way um, and make it more of a softer tone. And the way that we do that is through diffusion. Um, so you'll often see uh, soft boxes. I'm sure you've heard of these uh, if you've not uh, seen them already. Um, but these are things like this. And if I just come over to this website for a second, uh, I use Nunlight, so that's what I'm using for all of my, uh, my lights. As I say, in the download for today, you'll find details of all the lights that I am using. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about when I talk about a softbox and specifically a lantern style softbox. So this is just giving, uh, you know, a uh, making basically the light source instead of being the small point of light in the middle, uh, which is where the light is coming from, because it's going through this uh, sort of large opaque diffuser, it basically makes the light source appear uh, or act as if it is much, uh, much larger. And what that means is that instead of having a small source of light that's sort of hitting the side of your face, uh, you've actually got something which is a much broader uh, source of light. So you're, you're getting a much sort of cleaner um, uh, coverage of your, of your face. One thing I forgot to do was I mentioned the uh, backlight. If I just come back to this, <laughs> I didn't actually turn it on. So the point of the backlight is to just give a little bit more separation uh, from the background. So that is the back backlight down there at the bottom uh, bottom right. Um, so that's the, the, the point of that one. Uh, but apart from that, though, even if you've still got these lantern style lights, they're still pretty much sort of spilling out light everywhere. So it would sort of fill the room with light. And I mentioned about those practical lights on the back. And obviously, the ones that I've got, you know, I want to intentionally have uh, this sort of colored look onto the, uh, the back wall. Uh, and what would happen is if I'd just got some really powerful light sources in front of me, uh, and even the, uh, the one behind me, if that light was able to spill out everywhere, then what would happen is it would kind of in effect, sort of dilute those uh, those colored lights behind me because they would, you know, potentially sort of overpower it. So what we want to do then is we want to have a little bit more directional control. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, earlier in the sort of intro, that it's all about actually light control as opposed to just, you know, the sort of positioning it. It's, it's this control of light that is the, uh, that is the key. So uh, what we can use then is a different type of softbox that is much more directional. So this would be something like the uh, Nunlight uh, softbox that I'm using here. If we go, come up to here, this is what you can see. This big round thing is actually the front of a big sort of parabolic um, uh, light. So let's take a look at what those look like. Um, it's something like, wrong window, it's something like this. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so it's a big sort of para, uh, parabolic um, uh, cone uh, with the big diffuser on the front. And so all of the light is basically being directed uh, forwards. So if we uh, come back to this image, though, uh, you can see that now what's happening is it's being a lot more controlled, it's not spilling out everywhere, uh, but we can still get it tighter still. And that's by applying uh, what they call a crate or a grid on the front of the uh, the light there. So that is in fact what I've got here. Uh, it's this thing that's on the front um, and it's basically just like a crate. There's actually one on that light there. Um, and the reason why you can't necessarily see the, uh, the actual lights the, the front of the light source is because the crate is doing its job. It's stopping the light from spilling out and heading over to the uh, the camera uh, where that you were just looking from there. So by applying this crate onto the front of the light, it just get, makes it even more directional. And so now what you can see is that in fact, the light coming out of that uh, key light is pretty much missing the entire back wall that is being captured by the camera in that field of view. And so when we do the same thing with our fill light uh, and the same thing with our backlight as well, uh, we've got a really controlled light that's still making sure that I'm fully illuminated, uh, but it's not actually spilling out onto everything else. And so that's what makes it so that, uh, you know, when you look into the, the back here, um, there's no sort of other light that's getting onto the back wall apart from those practical lights that I've got there in the back. So that's what we're trying to do here is basically just sort of control the light at, uh, at, every, uh, at every step. Um, so if I just go uh, on a little bit more then, 
Um, the uh, the next thing that I want to talk about then is uh, uh, is about uh, is about green screen. If I uh, just go on a little bit, I'm just conscious of time today because I know that Adrian is uh, coming on to talk about the Ecamm Live Academy a, a bit later. So I want to make sure that I get through everything, but I'll come to any uh, any questions. Um, and I'll just quickly, actually, before I get onto the green screen, I will just answer some of these specific about uh, lighting. Uh, let me just drop in a Q colon so that I can find some of these. Um, from a lighting camera standpoint, is there a best or minimum amount of space you should have between you and the wall behind you? Um, if that's a case of testing that out, really, just to make sure that you don't want to have the uh, necessarily want any shadows. Uh, but you can kind of get away with uh, a lot if you've got it well lit. And in fact, I'll come on to this as well when I start talking about the green screen, because a lot of the green screen is um, is to do with uh, is to do with lighting, as we'll see. So um, really, I mean, my, this wall behind me is quite far away. It's kind of, I don't know, eight foot or something like that. So I certainly can't reach out and touch it. Uh, but it can be quite close. Um, and still, as long as you've got that separation between you and the background, um, then uh, then you can be uh, you can be perfectly fine. Um, next one. So if you've got an overhead cam, should there be a light position to shine straight down at what you're shooting at? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. If you're doing things like that, where you, you know, you've got uh, something on the uh, on the desk that you want to show, uh, then yeah. I mean, actually, I don't tend to have a, a light coming down because this key light that I've got here um, does kind of point down on the desk. So the desk is pretty well illuminated in my case. And I do do those kind of demos. You can see I've got a camera directly up here as well. Um, however, I have in the past, you know, had a small light mounted to this that illuminates the light. And what I was careful to do there, though, was actually have something around the light so that um, it wasn't spilling out onto uh, onto me, so that I didn't get some weird glare. So you might want to just be conscious of that, try and have it so that it's it's only uh, illuminating the desk rather than uh, uh, anything that you don't want it to uh, to shine on. Uh, one green screen obstacle, uh, if I curl my head, well, to be honest with you, uh, I'm, I'm just preempting the rest of this sentence. <laughs> um, yeah, I must admit that I've probably got the best haircut for uh, for green screen because, yeah, hair can be tricky with uh, with green screen. <laughs> so it's not a problem I uh, I have. But yeah, if you've got, uh, you know, fuzzy hair and there's like small little gaps between it, if you like, then uh, yeah, sometimes if you haven't got a good uh, keying uh, and and adjusted the, the level right, then it can be a bit tricky. But hopefully, with some of the things I talk later on about, um, then uh, then we might be able to answer that. So we'll come back to that one there, Tatiana. Um, with the enormous softbox, is it possible to use just one Aperture 200 XS uh, with the Aperture Light Dome 2? Uh, I'm not sure about the uh, Aperture Light Dome 2 specifically, um, but the Aperture 200, I'm guessing, is a 200 watt. Um, all of these uh, these lights that I've got in front of me um, are um, the Nanlite 4s are 60, so they're only 60 watt. And also, um, they've got a fan in for cooling, um, but if you set them to this particular setting, which basically reduces the power by half, uh, then the fans never kick in. So I've done that. So effectively, uh, even if I have these at maximum brightness, it's still only using half of the 60 watts. Um, and this is a, uh, I should just briefly mention, this is a 90 centimeter, so three foot softbox. Uh, this one is a two foot 60 centimeter softbox, but both of these are Nanlite fours or 60s. So um, yeah, and there's plenty of power in those. Um, and when it comes to the, um, the actual lighting balance between those, uh, I should just uh, just sort of mention a few things that I've uh, I've glossed over here. I do talk about it in the uh, the download, uh, but the other thing that we can uh, talk about though is the sort of balance between those. So you have what are called lighting ratios, and that uh, when people talk about a lighting ratio, they mean they're talking about the. Um, uh, the, the ratio of your key light to your fill light. So at the moment, they are, if I just move my fill light so that it is about the same, the softbox is smaller, but if I put it on the same as the uh, main light there, uh, you can see that that's basically, you know, I'm really, that's, that's really quite bright now. I'm sort of uh, uh, evenly uh, lit all over. This is the kind of lighting that you might see, you know, uh, on news readers, for example, where they're not looking for anything too uh, dramatic. So they've just got basically even light all over the uh, the front of them. Uh, but then if you were to go down to something like this, uh, where I am, I can just actually show you this. If I go to the Nunlight app, uh, then I'm putting this one down at 30%. Um, and then if I go to, that's my fill light. If I go to my key light, uh, that one actually is at 100, but it's kind of more spread out. So it doesn't seem so uh, bright. Uh, but you can see that this is giving this slightly, uh, slightly less 
uh, harsh look, as in it's not, uh, you know, completely uh, <laughs> even everywhere. Um, but if you wanted to go for something more dramatic, um, then that would be something where you've got a much lower sort of fill level. So the ratio there would be uh, much lower of the fill to the, uh, the key light. Uh, and there's various different uh, sort of variations of these, uh, you know, sometimes where they'll have uh, no fill light at all um, or even, you know, no, uh, no key light and just bump the, uh, the fill light up uh, like this. And you can see that that's giving, you know, a sort of different level of, uh, <laughs> of drama, if you want, for want of a better word, to the, uh, to the shot. So uh, that idea of lighting ratios um, is, is something to bear in mind, and it's going to affect, you know, the overall look there. So uh, I tend to have mine something around about here uh, so that uh, it's not completely even all the way over, but I'm still not kind of, you know, in the shadows on any side, as it were. Um, but uh, just conscious of uh, of time, let me crack into the uh, the green screen side of things because uh, this is the, an area that I think is, uh, uh, as I say, it could be uh, it could be done a lot uh, <laughs> a lot uh, a lot more effectively. Uh, and actually, Ecamm gives us some really great uh, green screen ability. So it's not like if you've used the uh, the virtual backgrounds in Zoom, which is probably a lot of the reason that green screen has a bad name these days because if you've been in any zoom calls where people have got you know maybe the beach look in the background um or they've got whatever other background that they've got uh, but it's the keying that is the terrible thing that uh, happens there where you'll see you know this little sort of fuzzy edge around somebody or maybe even worse you know part of them starts missing um or there is just uh, you know their background but then if somebody walks past in the background then they'll sort of come in and out of uh, focus like a little apparition um so uh, so yeah it can be uh, really bad especially in in zoom meetings but the keying ability and by keying what i mean is that ability to remove the green and replace it with whatever background you want um, is something that ecamm really excels at uh, but there are things that we can do to actually improve upon that so let's go through first of all though and talk about uh, some of the reasons why i think that um you know green screen is actually a great thing to to be uh, to have in your arsenal shall we say for your uh, your video production so first of all it is obviously a space saving thing and somebody asked um earlier on uh, George, about the uh, the dif distance between you and the wall. Uh, if you are some, if you know, if you are really stuck for space, um, then uh, it is a way, obviously, to have a green screen and then you know have have something that looks a lot more of a uh, sort of fuller background. Um, that was certainly the case when I started my uh, YouTube channel uh, and I was just sort of setting things up. And actually, more so than just the YouTube channel, it was more really from just kind of like it, uh, during COVID, finding that I was having to do a lot more stuff from home. And so I set up a secondary office down in my in my basement and it was always a temporary thing. So I didn't want to go to the, uh, the hassle and expense of, uh, you know, completely fitting it out or anything. Um, but I did want to be able to create, uh, you know, some sort of environment for my channel, but then also, uh, you know, for meetings and things like that. So it's a space saving thing, first of all, uh, because you obviously just need the space to put the green screen up and you can make the background look as, as you know, however deep you want it to. Um, but the other thing is obviously cost effective if you don't want to build out a full studio or you want different types of things for different purposes uh, then obviously you know it's as, it costs as much as it costs to uh, get the actual image for the virtual background so that's another potential uh, reason there uh, and as I say that was a part of the fact for uh, you know when I first started my channel uh, I didn't want to go and build out a space dedicated for it uh, initially it was always going to come further down the line so uh, uh, so that's why I sort of opted for that uh, the other thing though is for uh, what I like to term immersive presentations. Uh, this that I'm doing now is of sorts an immersive presentation, you know, where it's not just me talking to a slide deck. I'm actually, you know, integral to the uh, the content on the screen, the, the, the bullet points of sliding in from the side. Uh, there is another way to do this though, rather than have me as a little sort of window here uh, with the bullet points over on, uh, on this side. Um, you can obviously have yourself over the top of the slides. Uh, and so using green screen, you can actually make yourself have a completely transparent background and just sort of overlay yourself over um, the content. Uh, same with doing things like screen shares and so on. Uh, you know, it's a common style to have, uh, you know, the person uh, sort of uh, hovering over the bottom of the, uh, the content. So that's another area where green screen can be useful uh, to be able to get that good sort of keying of you and the background to be able to place yourself over the top of whatever content it is you want to present. The other thing, though, is for a branding opportunity. So in uh, meetings, for example, I 
used to like to just have a sort of plain background and then it would have like the logo of whatever company I was representing uh, would be part of that background. So um, it also, I think is less of a distraction you know depending on where you are then sometimes when you turn up to a, a you know business meeting you don't necessarily want all of the stuff in the background that can be a distraction so if you've just got a completely plain or sort of graduated fill uh, background uh, then you can do that very effectively with green screen perhaps as i say with a logo or something like that on it um, it also means that, uh, you know, this kind of uh, actual real background that I've got here that has got this sort of coloured fade to it, uh, you could actually just create that in uh, in a green screen effect uh, and then you can you know, have whatever colour you want there. So I did do a bit of that and I'll be talking about, uh, about that a little bit later when we dig into some of these uh, examples. Uh, the other thing, though, is about, uh, and I've just sort of grouped a few things together with this term consistently professional. <laughs> um, and this is when I uh, sort of pre COVID, when I was uh, traveling a lot more, I did have a portable green screen. And so when I was on, on my Zoom calls from wherever it happened to be, um, I would always have the exact same background. And it meant that um, it didn't really matter where I was in the world. Uh, I could uh, always have this same consistent look and feel. And I was just turning up to a meeting, getting on with doing whatever needed to be done in the meeting. Uh, without, you know, it being the question of uh, which hotel is it, where is it, where, which part of the world I'm in or whatever. Um, so there is this thing of just being consistent every time with having the same look and feel no matter where you are, if you are mobile. Uh, but equally, you know, even if you are just uh, in front of the kitchen sink or something, <laughs> you know, it works that way too. Um, and so, uh, so, yeah, it's just this ability to be very consistent about your uh, sort of appearance uh, wherever you happen to be if you've got like a mobile green screen setup. Um, so those are a few of the reasons that, you know, I've personally in the past considered green screen. Um, and so let's dig into now um, some of the uh, sort of green screen options that you've got. Uh, so the first thing is when I set up my uh, my little studio in my basement before, uh, what I did was I just went and bought some green screen material. And you can go to a fabric shop and just buy this stuff. And it's really uh, inexpensive to buy it, you know, by the, by the meter, by the yard, whatever. Um, and there's a few things you need to do to make sure sure that you get a good effect from it. Uh, so if it's full of uh, crinkles and things like this, uh, you want to make sure that it's nice and, and tight so that basically you've got a nice uh, flat surface, but we'll take a look at that uh, a little bit later. But yeah, you can get this for a really, uh, really low cost uh, if you want to just sort of put something up yourself. Um, however, uh, there are a few uh, other options that you've got. So, uh, of course, you can actually just go ahead and paint the wall if you want something a little bit more permanent and you've got a flat wall behind you that's free from uh, from marks, you know, as smooth as, uh, you know, reasonably smooth, uh, then you may want to just sort of paint the uh, the wall itself. Um, another option would be actually to use green lights. So uh, I've got all of these lights behind me uh, and what I can do is I can turn them onto green and so then that wall becomes a green wall and then I can actually key that out. So it kind of a bit defeats the purpose with uh, you know this particular setup I've got, but that is an option uh, that you can use. You can just have you know really good quality uh, green lighting so that then you can uh, activate it that way. Um, or then, of course, uh, you can just go and buy a green screen. So I'm going to show you my green screen in a moment, but I just want to mention the Elgato green screens because, uh, for me, these are one of the best uh, ways to, to do it. They're just really well made, um, and there's a few different models. So uh, there is this one, which is a collapsible green screen. And by the way, the links to all of these are in the, uh, the document that you can download in the, uh, the PDF if you register, uh, but they're also on Elgato's website, of course. Um, uh, so this one is a pop-up one that uh, is a bit like those um, things that you may have seen at conferences where they are sort of like pop-up advertising uh, boards or something like that. Uh, this one is around about, I think, a meter and a half wide, something like that, and then uh, about two meters tall, six foot tall, something like that. Um, and so it's basically, you know, you can put it on the ground and then it just pops up. Uh, they then got another one which is called the green screen MT and this is much like a sort of roller blind so it's a bit larger it's uh, about two meters wide so uh, what's that about six or seven foot uh, wide and about the same height as well and it can either fix to a wall so you can just roll it down um, or it can also suspend from a ceiling as well so you can have it suspended from the ceiling if you're not up against a wall. Uh, the one that I got though was a relatively new addition to the Elgato range just recently which is this one is the green screen XL. So it's basically the same size as the MT, um, but it's in the same sort of form factor as the uh, this one. So it's a, another pop-up one. 
which means you don't need it suspended from anything. It just pops up from the floor. And it also means you can take it anywhere and use it. Uh, when I say you can take it anywhere, it is quite large. So it's not like you're going to just put it, pop it in your suitcase or anything like that. But it is, uh, you know, relatively, uh, relatively portable. So uh, those are, were, are the sort of three that I recommend. And there's a couple of reasons for that. It, it, it uh, it means that you don't have to worry about, you know, one of the key things that can be a problem with green screens, which is that what you're trying to do is you want to have a really even light over the entire screen. Um, and if you've got any wrinkles or you've got any creases or anything like that, um, then all of that is going to mean that you're going to get slight shadows. The, the, the color is not going to be even. So uh, you need to make sure if you're just using uh, some sort of material like this, uh, that as I say, it's nice and tight and free from wrinkles, because as you can see here, there's a few different tones of green here. We've got a light green and a dark green in the little crease there. Um, and so uh, having something like one of those Elgato ones, though, um, it just means that basically you're guaranteed that you've got a nice flat surface, which is half of the battle. Um, so let's d then take a look at the actual sort of setup process then. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go through and uh, I'll start sort of building out a few different scenes and show you um, how, uh, how best to set these up. So the first thing is I'm just going to pop up the green screen for a second. So we've now got the uh, the green screen up, and as you can see, um, I was just talking about having an even light over it. Uh, and what you can already see is that uh, we've got slight variation of the light. So uh, you've got some dark corners up there, uh, dark corners there, um, and then it's a different color behind me. Um, one thing that you'll see some people say is uh, the secret to green screen is just more light. And what they do, and this is a mistake, is they just put loads of light in front of them and it's blasting them and the green screen uh, with light. Uh, what happens then, though, is um, it basically just makes them look washed out. I mean, you saw earlier when I just cranked up my, uh, my fill light, uh, it actually made me look a little bit washed out. So just adding more light into your entire room is not the solution. But let's first look at um, what the issue is, though, with these, uh, these you know, th this uneven color. If I just go into a different scene, <clears throat> I'll go into this one, and then I'm going to just toggle on the green screen. And we can do that in Ecamm. If I bring up this window, uh, I'm just going to toggle on the green screen effect here uh, for this camera. If I'm on the right camera, it's this one. Try that again. There you go. Uh, so you can see there that um, what we've got is there is the uh, the brick background, which is the virtual background, um, but it's not being applied to the whole of that area. You can adjust this in Ecamm, uh, and this is not the way that we're going to do it, but I'll just show you the effect of it. If I come into the, uh, the camera effects window again, uh, you've got this green screen here where we've just toggled it on, and you've got this thing called the fade level here. Now, the central position is really where you want to aim to have this because, uh, and, and it, you can see it's got the little letter 50 or the number 50 if you actually look at that. Um, and we can slide this to the right. And what that means is it's going to be sort of more aggressive with that green screen. And you can see that now it is filling up the, uh, uh, the image with that brick pattern. However, if we go too far, you'll see that basically it's getting so aggressive that slowly I'm, uh, I'm just disappearing out of the image as well. So there is a sweet spot there, but you can see that it's impossible for me with the current lighting that I've got on the green screen uh, to actually get that anywhere where it's going to completely key out the background, uh, but not affect me or the mic or anything else. Uh, the other way that you can go with this is you can move it over to the, the right hand side or the left hand side, sorry. Um, and then uh, that is going to be basically less effective. So uh, the sweet spot that you want to just always aim for is try and do it with uh, by your environment to change it so that uh, that 50 level there is where that uh, that fader is. So the secret then is rather than actually just blasting yourself with light, uh, what we want to do is we want to illuminate um, the actual green screen itself. So if I just now switch on some other lights, uh, what I've done now is there's no change to the lighting on me. All I'm doing is I'm changing the lighting on the green screen. And I've been very careful to make sure that that light actually isn't coming on me. And in the same way that we have those crates on our lights, so these ones help to direct the light this way. If I just switch to a different camera angle, what I've got is 
there is a vertical light over there um, and there's a flag. So a flag is something that is basically just blocking the light uh, and it's nothing technical. It's actually a bit of cardboard on the side of the light. But you can see that that light there is actually flooding the green screen with light. Um, and I've got another one on the other side. Uh, and so that is what is giving that really consistent, you know, now it's just a very uniform color all the way across. So what that does then is when we toggle on the green screen, if I come over here, uh, and I toggle the green screen on uh, with this uh, button here. <laughs> I've just inadvertently uh, locked the scene. Let me come back to this one. Uh, I've, I'll tell you what it is. I've switched to uh, that other scene. There we go. Uh, so if I just toggle the green screen on again, try again. There we go. Now you can see that we've got a much more sort of consistent look to it. Um, and it's doing a good job of keying out. Actually, there is still a little bit of uh, stuff going on around the edges. So what you may need to do is add some extra light to give you a bit more separation from the background. So what I've got is, as well as the, uh, the key light, the fill light, and so on, uh, what I've also got is I've got a couple of lights that are just sort of off to the side behind me um, and you can see one of them uh, just over here if I turn it on now uh, this one is just providing some more light in the background so if I just toggle this on and this one uh, so that's that light just up there uh, but now if I come back to this uh, front view uh, you can see it's doing a much better job wrong scene it's doing a much better job of uh, of keying uh, me out from that background so now we've been in a situation where we've got the um, the sort of lighting um, and the uh, of the green screen right, uh, but there's still some other things that are often catching people out. So. The first thing is uh, when it comes to actually choosing a virtual background, um, you want to make sure that your camera angle that you're looking at is going to be the same as the background. So I can show you something that's going to look really jarring straight away, which is, you know, somebody having a background that looks a little bit like this. I mean, this is perhaps even not even the worst example by any stretch, but uh, it just looks like I'm out of place. It doesn't look like a necessarily a natural place for me to be sitting at in this scene because of the, you know, the angle it's looking at, uh, the size of me even in the shot um, and I've seen people on zoom calls where they've got these virtual backgrounds where they've obviously gone and taken a picture or taken a picture of some nice interior but the angle of it is just all completely wrong uh, the other thing though that is uh, wrong about uh, this is just the overall tone of my face versus um, you know the background you can see that this is a real sort of daylight setting however you know I'm looking you know more like a, a there's more like a warm light on me at the moment so if I was to change to another scene, and I'll just give you two sort of examples of this. Uh, here is a lounge scene. Here is the very same lounge scene, uh, but with warm light. So you can see here that uh, the tone of my, uh, my face looks uh, more in keeping with uh, what we've got in the background here than it does for that very same uh, setting if I go to the, uh, the daylight version. So here it looks too warm. Now you can change this though in the camera effects. So what you might want to do is in the camera effects window, uh, then you do have this temperature. So basically what we were looking to do if I turn the temperature down so it's more daylight, uh, you can see that this looks more in keeping uh, with the, uh, the background now. So it's more of that sort of whiter light as opposed to the warm light. So you can change this um, just in Ecamm. Uh, it is always better, obviously, to change things at source. So changing it with the lighting rather than sort of changing after the fact. But this is a really quick way to do that. And if I just go back now to um, the other one, which was that kind of warm look uh, like this, uh, then you can see that now uh, I look, uh, you know, too uh, too white. And so if I move this down this way, so it's got a, uh, a sort of warmer look. Uh, it's got more of a glow that is in keeping with that uh, that background. This background is actually the uh, the same background that uh, I was using in my YouTube videos originally. Uh, let me just take that down. It's a little bit too orange. <laughs> um, but actually, for my videos, it always was this particular look that I had going on. Uh, and now, again, you can see that I'm not really in keeping with the, uh, the background. So what I did uh, before was... I, uh, I actually changed the lighting that I've got at the side um, to match that lighting in the background. So if I just bring this up again, I've got these two lights here on the, uh, the outer right. Um, and if I click into this one, and then I'm just going to change this to a colored light. Um, and here I've got uh, the uh, this sort of uh, the purple on this side. I just need to change the actual color of that. Uh, so I'm going to change it to a purple. So now you can see that I've got this purple uh, sort of glow on this side um, that is kind of matching that background color. Uh, and then on the other side, let's go to the one on the left. 
And then on here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that again to this one, which is the colored mode. Uh, and I'm gonna have that one on blue. It's already on a bit of a blue color, but take it like that. Uh, so now you can see that um, we've got this background going on uh, with the blue and the purple, if I just take uh, this down. Um, but we've also got light on the side of my face, which is kind of mimicking uh, those colors in the background. So uh, that's another key point really, is just to make sure that uh, whatever light you've got going on in the background, as well as having your camera angle looking like it's kind of matching, uh, then also try to make sure that the, uh, the light Light is uh, is also matching uh, and I do just want to reiterate this thing of uh, not necessarily just blasting yourself with light because here you would totally lose the uh, the sort of definition um, I want to give you an even more extreme example of this just to show how you can sort of play with the uh, the different light um, and I'm going to use an example because <laughs> my kids it was after my uh, my daughter's uh, birthday at the weekend and so as soon as she's passed her birthday they're asking when it's going to be Christmas so let's take a look at a little uh, Christmas example here so I've got a nice little uh, Christmassy scene here by the uh, by the fire uh, we could even turn the fire noise on there we go. We're going to enjoy a nice little time by the fire. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a camera overlay and I'll just pop this one in like this. Uh, now it's over the top. So we need to position this somewhere um, where it's going to look a little bit uh, more in keeping. Uh, so let's say I'm going to be sitting on a chair at the front here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle on the green screen to get rid of the green screen. Um, and if I just pop this one up, uh, I'm going to uh, activate the green screen, uh, but what I'm going to do here is um, instead of selecting a background because we've already got this uh, this video background, uh, I'm just going to select transparent. So this is what I was talking about as well, where you can put yourself over the top of uh, some other content. Uh, but here I'm obviously just sitting myself in this particular scene. Um, this is not looking quite right at the moment because we've got some weird lighting. It's not necessarily uh, um, uh, lo looking right compared to the background. So what we can do though is if I just put my little uh, app back up here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out all the lights and we're just going to build up the correct lighting. Um, so first of all, I'm going to turn off these two that I've got on either side. Uh, I'm going to turn off the backlight. I'm going to turn off the front one here and I'm going to turn off the key light. So uh, there's still a little bit of light because I've actually got a few little uh, uh, accent lights just down there. So I'm still getting a bit of light for there, but we'll just ignore that for the time being. Let me just come back to here. So the first thing that we could say is, well, there's a little bit of blue light uh, coming from there. So if I take a look at my uh, right hand side over here, or it's actually left for you. <laughs> uh, so let me come into the left one uh, as it is on the screen. Uh, I beg your pardon, it is actually the outer, outer right here. Uh, then what we could do here is if I just toggle this one on, and what I want to do is I want to change this to more like a blue light, so it's matching that blue that's coming in through that window. So if I just move this one down here a little bit, um, something around about there, but I'm going to turn that down because it's a little bit too bright. So now I've kind of just matched that little blue light that's coming through the, the window over the back of my shoulder there. Um, so next up is we've got the fire. So we can actually go into the, uh, um, the backlight, for example, here, um, and we could go in and use one of their little fire effects. So we've got some different options in here for different effects. So if we're going to the effect mode and go into here and go to candle and fire, um, and fixture is disconnected. Of course it's gonna disconnect when I'm just doing a demo about it. <laughs> so not to worry. There we go, it's come on. Um, so here we can select uh, how much uh, of a range there is in this sort of effect. You can see how it's just now got this little flickering effect going on behind me. Uh, and then we can change the speed of it as well. Uh, so let's just leave it like that. It's just got a bit of a flicker. What I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna go to the, uh, the left-hand side one as well over here. Um, and I'm just going to add, um, which, this one, this one here. Uh, no, it is this one here. <laughs> and I'm just going to add a little bit of a, a flicker on this one as well. So I'll come into the effect mode. And then I'll switch this one to the candle and fire as well. There we go. And that one hopefully should be coming on. Uh, and it's not. Let me just switch over to this one a second. Uh, this one here, actually, I beg your pardon. Oh, it's because I've not actually toggled it on. That might help. There we go. 
So I'll just turn that down a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the fill light, which is also in the front on that side. Uh, I'm going to use the same sort of effect on that one as well. Uh, but we want to uh, just go into the effect mode. And then I'll put this one into the uh, uh, fire as well. And just turn it down a little bit. And then the last one is we do want to have a bit of the key light just so that uh, it's uh, illuminated from this side, but that is a little bit too bright. So let's just turn that down a little bit. Uh, but you can see that now, um, basically, I've got this uh, roaring fire behind me over here that is illuminating the side of my face, or so it seems. I've got the, the sort of faint blue coming in from the back, uh, hitting the side of my face here, and then I can adjust the key light to just give me some sort of natural light coming in from the, uh, from the front to actually illuminate me on the screen. So so the thing about this, though, apologies for all of that uh, filling about, but the thing about this, though, is if I just take this one down here, um, the thing to note is that if I just go over to my uh, regular green screen view, um, this one here, um, then uh, if I take this green screen off, uh, the point about it is that there is no sort of flooding of light from me from the front. All of this has been done with a really kind of subtle amount of light from different places um, that only just sort of comes into effect though when you are in that particular uh, in that particular scene. So um, let me just uh, switch a few of these things back though. So if I just come back out of here and just noticing the uh, the time there. Uh, apologies if I'm rushing a little bit. If I just come back to my uh, fill, I'm going to change this one. Let me just come back here and show you this. Uh, this app, by the way, uh, so I'm using the Nanlight apps, uh, Nanlight. Uh, Nanlite, <laughs> and there is the Nanlint, Nanlink app, which is for mobile. Um, however, you can um, uh, you can uh, use it on a uh, on the Mac as well. So Mac has the ability to use iOS apps on the the Mac. So let me just put this one back here, uh, and and that is how I'm controlling my uh, my Nanlite apps from here. It's just basically the mobile app, but it is running on the uh, on the Mac at the moment. So I'll just switch this one back to where it was, uh, and then I'll also do the same with this one here. Switch this one back to uh, this same mode. And then finally, this one down here as well. And switch that one back. So hopefully we've got uh, no more effects going on and they're all as they, uh, as they should be. So I'll just come back to the, uh, the main green screen though and just check that I've, uh, I've covered off uh, enough of those uh, little tips that I wanted to mention. Um, so the first thing about it is that you obviously want to make sure that you've got the even lighting going on in the, in the scene that you're in. Uh, you want to make sure that the angle of your uh, your backdrop is the same. Uh, just another quick example here of the thing about the color. Uh, so if I was to come into this one, for example, which is kind of like a, a home office look, I just need to increase the, uh, the brightness of some of these. I think I turned down my key light too much. Uh, there we go. That's the problem with fiddling with all this stuff is putting it back. Uh, there we go. Um, but uh, you may want to add a bit more warmth to this one uh, because of the sort of wood background going on. Uh, whereas, and I'm just adjusting that in the uh, in the camera effects. Uh, whereas, if you go into the uh, another one here, so let's choose something that is a bit more daylight, uh, something like uh, this one. Uh, then now you can see that the tone of my skin is not quite right. So all I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to change the uh, temperature uh, and make that one a little bit uh, more, uh, more sort of daylight. So the more of that cooler uh, color. Um, so uh, if I just uh, just come back over to here for a second, uh, if we think about then the uh, the green screen and the lighting, uh, what we're doing is we're still doing exactly the same as we had before. Uh, so we still got this three point lighting. It's just that maybe instead of those uh, practical lights at the back, uh, we just basically now we've got our green screen. Uh, the actual concepts of the lighting remain the same. The only thing that might be different is uh, given the uh, the tone or the color of your background. You may want to just have some sorts of accent lighting going on there uh, in the in the in the sides or in the background just to sort of replicate whatever is going on in the back of your your virtual scene.
Um, so uh, let's just take a quick look then at uh, the sort of summary of those uh, those sort of tips. I'll just quickly run through them just once again. Uh, so first of all, the green screen lighting, that is the key not to flood yourself with light, but to make sure that the green screen is well illuminated. And uh, and that means that make sure it's you know nice and tight so that there are no wrinkles because that will also give shadows. Make sure that your key lights aren't uh, and your fill light isn't casting a shadow of you on the back, but having plenty of light on the green screen will eliminate that in any case. Um, so the next thing is the balanced subject lighting. So this is about, be it the, uh, the the temperature of the light that's on your face versus what's going on in the background, in your background scene, uh, or be it the actual colors themselves. So that idea of actually replicating what's going on in the scene in the background uh, on your on yourself as well. Uh, then the uh, the color temperature consistency. So again, uh, I've just mentioned that all part of the same thing, balanced subject lighting, make sure that that is the same. Um, and then also make sure that you match the camera angle. So uh, if you've got your camera, you know, in front of you and you're sitting, uh, sitting down, then you'd want to make sure that the relative height and angle and everything of that background image is matching that as well. Um, and then finally, it is, you know, using the optimum settings that we've got in Ecamm. So the ability to be able to tweak the color uh, and so on. Obviously, it's always better to adjust any of these uh, color uh, and temperature settings with actual real lights or with the camera settings. Um, but you can always go in and tweak the things like that in Ecamm. And specifically, that one about the color temperature um, are, uh, are really, uh, you know, really uh, useful to just be able to adjust that. Because that is one of the main things that I notice stands out uh, when I'm seeing people on virtual backgrounds is this thing of uh, they're in a warm environment, but they've got a really cool look on their face or they're, you know, the other way around. They're in a cool daylight setting, um, but they've got this, some really warm colored lights on them and it just looks really jarring and out of place. And those are the little things that uh, that sort of add to the uh, the realism of it all. Um, let me just, uh, before I go to uh, coming up next, let me just go to uh, check some of these uh, the questions and uh, let's see where we're up to with those. Um, so in terms of coming back to your question, Tatiana, um, about the, the curls, um, it's all to do with, um, you know, the diff the, def the definition of the green screen behind, you know, how, how bright that is, or at least how, how well the, uh, the computer uh, can sort of figure out where the green is versus where you know you are and you know your hair as well um, so uh, so if you have got a really well lit green screen uh, you may find that actually it does a really great job of, uh, of keying that out now because it's very clear for it to pick out you know it's the same uniform color um, all the way one thing you might find is if you are sort of too close to the green screen um, then that might also be casting you know shadows so uh, as I say if you can get it well lit like this though it kind of eliminates that to a certain extent but um, yeah that might be uh, might help to uh, to solve that but uh, I can recommend this haircut if you're going to do a lot of green screen but I appreciate it doesn't suit everyone <laughs> um, so uh, let's have a quick look um, the earpieces are um, the KZ ZS10, um, and they um, yeah they're they're twenty five dollars. So uh, from from Amazon, I've been using these since uh, since about two years or something. Really happy with them. So uh, they're great. Um, what am I using to control the light? So yeah, that is the they are Nan lights, and I'm using the Nan Link app. Um, I did a video on my YouTube channel where I got a little bit uh, over the top geeky about it because you still have to go and manually sort of press the buttons. There is no um, hotkeys or anything like that. So you have to actually go in with the, uh, uh, with the mouse and physically click on the buttons. Uh, but what you can do in here though, is there is different scenes. So you can save a scene with presets for all of your lights and then you can just go and press a button. So I've got one that I set up for when I'm on a Zoom call. I don't tend to have uh, for you know some other business interests. I don't tend to have uh, you know all the purple lights and stuff going on. I have something a little bit more plain, a little bit more corporate. <laughs> um, but uh, so you can just set presets in there. Uh, but what I did do uh, to be able to do this from keyboard uh, from uh, from the stream deck is I set up a keyboard maestro macro because in keyboard maestro you can simulate mouse clicks on the screen. So I set up a macro in keyboard maestro that opens the Nanlink app and then goes and physically uh, clicks on the uh, the different thing that I need to to click on. Uh, so that means that I can technically still uh, control them with the stream deck, although it is a bit of a stretch, <laughs> not, not for everybody. Uh, so let me just take that one down. Um, so uh, we have a green painted uh, painted wall. So yeah, that 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 works 
perfectly if you've got a green painted wall. I know for uh, for a long time, Doc Rock had uh, a wall in his studio that was painted green when he was doing a lot of green screen. So, uh, yeah. Um, the distance between me and the green screen. So this is like about three foot, I would guess, between me and that now. Um, and I just put it far enough back that um, if I put it any further back, um, then uh, it, you would see the sort of edges. So I kind of tried to put it as far back as possible. The one when I was in my uh, my basement studio, uh, that was kind of like at arm's length. Um, but again, just because I'd got, you know, good lighting on it, um, it, uh, it, as l it maintained that separation. So the thing you want to avoid is if you're too close, you get those shadows uh, from your main key lights. Um, so I'd say probably probably, you know, minimum is going to be about two foot or something. Um, but again, if you've got good lighting, then you can sort of mitigate that and you just want to avoid those, uh, those shadows. Um, so what piece of equipment are you using to give uh, warm daylight, etc.? Uh, so actually, my uh, when you look at lighting, you can buy um, your, uh, your your lights like either by color where you can adjust the color temperature. Um, or you can uh, you can get ones that are you know fully color uh, lights. Actually, my key light and my my softbox here um, they have no color variation at all. So they're five thousand two hundred, I think, Kelvin. Uh, so they're daylight, basically they're natural light, um, and uh, that's what that's what these two are up here. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just use that one because I'm not actually changing the uh, the color so much with that if i do need to tweak it i will just do it with uh, with ecamm uh, but generally these days i'm just i don't tend to use green screen as much uh, and so i just had the the plain ones because they give a much uh, much sort of nicer uh, nicer nicer color so the for regular lighting i would recommend just go with the uh, you know the daylight uh, lights uh let me just switch away from that for a second um and if you used AI to create that scene, uh, the lounge scene, uh, no. So the um, it wasn't AI. It was a couple of years ago that is that I was using that on my channel. Uh, but it is a virtual thing, so it's it's uh, like an interior design package uh, to create, you know, virtual interiors. So it's not an AI created one as such, uh, but it isn't real either. <laughs> so if I just uh, toggle that one back on, uh, the one we're talking about. If I switch my green screen back on, where's it gone? Over here. Um, so yeah, these ones with this, uh, this lounge scene here, I should probably have myself in a background since we're talking about green screen rather than just leaving the actual green background. Uh, but yeah, these ones, um, it is a completely virtual thing in the back. So it's not a real photo either. Um, so yeah, that's to answer that question, Michael. Um, are you using Pavo tubes to light your green screen? Actually, they're not. They're regular um, fluorescent tubes. So, uh, well, I mean, LED tubes, but you know the long ones that you have in the ceiling of, uh, of a house or an office or whatever. Um, so, uh, so that's what those are. They're nothing special, actually, that I'm using to light the green screen. The only thing to be careful about, um, and as I say, they're kind of, you can't really see it, but it's behind that strip of cardboard. <laughs> so that cardboard is a flag that is stopping the light spilling out, but it is just a regular, um, you know, whatever it is, 1.5 uh, meter strip. Uh, strip that is uh, coming through. I keep going to my wrong scenes today, um, but they're just regular lights. The thing to watch for, though, is you will find that certain lights uh, have a flicker when they're on camera. Um, and so you want to make sure that that isn't going to happen. And the best way I found to do that was when I go to the hardware store, just pull out my uh, my camera um, and then point it at them. And you'll see that a load of them are flickering and a load of them aren't. Um, and so I just got the ones that weren't. <laughs> but that's that's all I'm using for that. They're, they are nothing, uh, nothing special to light the green screen with obviously the ones that i've got uh, for the side those are all uh, all video lights that i can adjust of course um when trying to evenly light my green screen i struggle with the green light splashing on me uh, and it's visible to the viewer any way to reduce this so uh, that is uh, a little bit of what i was doing with those two lights that i had on the side uh, where it was uh, just to give that little bit of extra separation um and this incidentally is the thing about you know you want to be careful about where you're putting the green screen. You know, don't go and paint your whole room green <laughs> because uh, you're then going to get it all reflecting off the off the front and everything onto you as well. So you want to just uh, you know try and be as controlled about it as possible. Um, but yeah, having the uh, the lights at the side not spilling out onto you um, will will sort of help that a little bit. But then as well, you know, those secondary lights that I had behind um, that were sort of illuminating me from the back a little bit to give that extra bit of separation. Um, but there will obviously always be some level of uh, you know, 
a green tinge in the air, as it were. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, side note on today's topic, what app are you using for the mouse? It's uh, Pro Mouse is the name of the app. That's what I'm using to, uh, to show the little mouse cursor on screen. Um, if green light reflects, oh, so this is the same thing, really. Um, yeah, it's just a case of trying to control where the light is being uh, is being pointed, uh, and that's another reason. The further back that you've got the green screen, the less likely that it is. You know, if you're very close to it, um, then you might well, you know, get it sort of bouncing off and, and reflecting, so you th then it sort of appears on you. So, uh, if you can get a bit more separation from the green screen, that is also uh, something that can help with that. Um, can you save scenes with the lighting app? Oh yes, so yeah, you can do. You can change. Uh, you can save all of those things and then just press a button and it will just change all of your lights. So I have a button that just switches all of mine off, and then I have another one that switches them on for those different uh, uh, different scenarios. Um, how many lights do I have in my studio? So uh, I have uh, the main lights is obviously the key light, the fill light. The one that's just over up there, which is my uh, my hair light or my backlight. <laughs> the ones that are on the back wall, um, I've got two Nanolite Pavo tubes, which are sort of behind my seat. And uh, they are giving uh, that sort of wash on the uh, on the wall. Um, and then uh, normally I have a couple that are onto those uh, acoustic panels on the back. In fact, if I just quickly pop the green screen down. So on the uh, on the back wall there, I've actually changed the color of the light while I was fiddling with them, but I've normally got those uh, two Pavo tubes at the back there. That's what gives that sort of purpley color on the back wall. Um, and then normally those two acoustic panels there, uh, the lights that I'm currently using, you know, on the side of me, they would be pointing onto that uh, onto that back wall there. Um, and then there's a few sort of uh, little accent lights around the place as well. So these things that I've got just down in here, for example. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's what I'm using. But actually, the full list is in that uh, the download that you can get. So if you've uh, signed up, then you you can get that uh, that download. Um, just quickly wrapping up these other questions. Uh, <laughs> where was I when you shot your documentary? <laughs> Um, have you played with LUTs to simulate certain lighting uh, uh, effects, uh, even though it's a 2D overlay? To be honest, I haven't really played with LUTs much, only to actually test out the functionality. So I have got one in here, uh, and you can, uh, in fact, have I? I've, I've got it in another profile. Oh, that's it. Uh, but what you can do with a LUT, a LUT is basically, you know, adding some uh, color effect um, or, you yeah, adjustment effect uh, and then what you can do is in your camera effects here you can come to here and uh, select a LUT and then once you select that and it stands for lookup table uh, once you select that then you can adjust sort of left and right uh, to decide how much of that effect you want to apply so um, I haven't really played with that too much other than to just uh, try it out so <laughs> that's where I am with uh, uh, with that let me just take off uh, this one for a second and uh, we'll get to the uh, the rest of these questions. Um, so in what case would you prefer the lantern over the softbox style? So the lantern style is that one that is basically uh, a big ball and it's filling the room. I mean, you can see now because I've actually switched off uh, the green screen, what I should do is switch off those lights as well because uh, that is effectively what you'd have with the lantern style. You can see how the whole of the back wall is, is illuminated, and that would be what would happen if the light was spilling out. So the way that the reason why you might want one of those is you may actually just want a much more light, bright, you know, uh, uh, daylight style scene. Uh, you know, if you're going to be on Zoom calls all day, you may not want to look like you're in a... Uh, uh, you know, in a in a gaming basement. Not that I do any gaming, um, but uh, that might be a case where you'd want the lantern style is to just actually have more natural uh, uh, light or seemingly more natural light um, in the in the entire room rather than it being very focused. I'm wanting the very highly directional ones uh, so that it doesn't sort of wash out uh, all of that light that's going on in the background. So uh, yeah, I'd forgotten to switch those off. Uh, that is a good a good reason why. You see how it just sort of illuminates the whole uh, whole room. So that would be what would happen with the uh, the lantern style ones. Um, is uh, is it possible a smoother transition between your camera and the background? 
Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, actually. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by a smoother transition. Uh, do you mean the uh, in the green screen where you can see this sort of edge, uh, if that's what you're talking about, um, then in the uh, in the green screen controls, if you're finding that the edge is a little bit, um, uh, you know, you're getting some sort of outline that you're seeing very uh, distinctive, uh, then uh, that would be in the green screen settings, uh, this fade level. Uh, so you can still, you know, even after you've done everything to set your green screen and, and coloring up and everything, um, then you can still adjust this fade level here, uh, which is just going to adjust that slightly so uh, if that is what you're talking about that would be uh, how you would uh, how you would do that um, I missed one out here. So uh, what is the Ecamm setting mask edges? Uh, so what that is, is I mentioned one of those other uh, green screens, which is, and this is the reason why I, I don't particularly use this one, but uh, there is this one from Elgato, which is much narrower, and that wouldn't necessarily fill the entire frame. Uh, so what you might find with that particular one is that maybe it would come to here. And so what the mask edges does is um, it uses the, you know, the bit in the center where your camera is uh, or where your, you are <laughs> and it crops out that. But the mask edges then also fills out the rest of the, the image as well. So even if your green screen doesn't quite fill the frame of your camera, um, it will then do that other little bit of, uh, of, uh, of filling it in. Uh, so that's what uh, that is for. Um, what is the best way to accommodate hitting the edge of the green screen if you've got one to... Oh, well, that's... So, so sorry, yeah, that is exactly the uh, the thing there, the fill. Um, Ecamm doesn't extend if it is too far um, or you lean over. Um, yeah, there is always that issue of if you've got something that's too narrow um, and then you sort of, like, reach out and you, your your hand sort of disappears out of the, the picture because it's doing that fill edges. So there's no way to, uh, to do that other than using that... Um, uh, yeah, that, that sort of fill uh, mask edges thing. Um, if your space is limited and you have your green screen pretty close behind you uh, within a foot, any downsides? It's just this thing of the potential for shadows to be cast onto the back of it. Um, I had, uh, when in my basement, because it was fairly close to me, it was, as I say, like a couple of feet away, probably about, in fact, what you're talking about. Um, I had these same strip lights that I've, I've got on the side here. I actually had them all along the bottom uh, and it was just basically illuminating it up from the bottom. Um, and the, that had a sort of side effect which was that because uh, I'd got a really low ceiling in the basement as well and it was uh, it was white um, then the light was sort of shining up bouncing off the ceiling and then actually helping to illuminate my shoulders to kind of separate me from the uh, the background a little bit as well um, so it all comes down to lighting though really and just making sure that you're you're not casting any shadows yourself onto the uh, onto the green screen um, can you talk about green screen versus blue screen and why you would use uh, blue? So there is the option in, uh, in Ecamm to use blue screen. Um, where is it? Uh, here. So when you toggle on green screen, uh, there is a, a little green and blue. So you can change. You could just actually use a blue screen. Um, honestly, I forget the reason why there was this shift from blue to green. Um, I can't remember. It, I've been told it once, but the uh, the memory has gone out of my head again. <laughs> so I can't remember what the technical reason was why uh, it always used to be blue screen. And then at some point there was this shift where it went over to green screen, but you can still do it with, I mean, technically you could do it with uh, any color, I guess, as long as it was set up that way. But there was some reason, and I forget it now, as to uh, as to why <laughs> green is the favoured method of doing it. Something to do with the hue from the cameras or something like that. So uh, I forget exactly. But you can, it does work with the the blue if you've got some sort of uh, blue screen going on. Uh, obviously, if you like to wear green, you're probably better off using the uh, the blue. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let me uh, just see. Sorry, I couldn't uh, give you any answer on that. I'm sure somebody else in the chat might uh, might know though. Um, am I using uh, one light to illuminate the green screen? So no, it's actually, it is actually two. I've got one of those fluorescent tubes on either side and they're positioned vertically. Um, so they're kind of spilling over and pretty much covering uh, the whole thing evenly. So that's the way that I'm doing that. Um, I have a cam on a dolly track, which I can move uh, in a slow radius around me. The motion is great effect, uh, but is there an easy way to... Ah, the, yeah, the thing about that is... Um, yeah, what you need, what you're effectively needing to do there is you're needing to have a moving background that is going to be synced with the movement of your camera. I don't know of a, a, an easy way to do that. Uh, certainly not with uh, uh, with Ecamm. 
or in any case, <laughs> I don't know of an easy way to do that. Um, I'm sure there is software that you can get that do, does that. You know, that's obviously uh, when you see that, you know, in TV studios where the whole camera sort of pans around uh, from, uh, from one side to another, um, and then they've still got the same virtual background going on in the background. Uh, there is a way to do this, but um, it's out of, my, uh, out of my scope, I'm afraid. <laughs> so I've never, I've never tried to do that. I did once do a video on my channel, which was using Ecamm to build a full TV studio. Uh, and I had myself sort of sitting at a news desk with uh, you know another desk over the other side and, and various different screens perhaps I'll go and drop the link to that in uh, uh, in the ecam group or something like that but um, uh, yeah that was really easy to sort of put these things together um, and then you can have a green desktop um, so that then you can simulate yourself sitting at a desk I mean you can't see the top of my desk here but you can actually make a full-on studio where you've got uh, you know an actual desk to make it look like you're in a completely uh, different setting uh, so, yeah, sorry I couldn't give you an answer on that one uh, as such either. Um, what was the color temperature for the vertical uh, GS lights? So if that is the, the lights on the, uh, the side that I'm using to illuminate the, the green screen, they're, they're just sort of daylight as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's what, what those are. The main lights that I've got here, the key light and the, uh, the fill light are, I think 5,200, 5,400 Kelvin. Uh, those are, those are fixed. Um, so with, uh, with that <laughs> and, uh, right on time, because I know Adrian is uh, going to be making a start soon. If anybody's got any questions and, uh, sorry to have rushed a little bit towards the end here. If anyone's got any questions about this though, do feel free to, uh, drop them into the, uh, into the Ecamm group and tag me in if you've got any specific questions. Uh, and don't forget also to, uh, to sign up, uh, so that you can come along to that zoom session on day six, which will be on uh, next Tuesday. So day five is going to be on Monday uh, and then we've got day six on Tuesday. Uh, so on Monday we are going to be talking um, about the uh, supporting apps that go hand in hand with uh, with Ecamm. Uh, so this is all the sort of little utility style apps that I have that sit up in my menu bar uh, that really just help when I'm live streaming or when I'm presenting or, or things like that. Uh, thanks for joining us. I think we're just there in terms of uh, in terms of time. <laughs> As I say, any questions, feel free to uh, reach out and have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you on Monday.